Yo, yeah, what's poppin' guys, Sizzle here, and this is how to have a fully customizable input display with just the buttons or whatever you want to actually have it completely customizable. I, all the videos and things I was finding on the internet were showing you quote-unquote customizable you know, input displays that were just like a different colored controller or something. But no, this is completely customizable. You can have whatever buttons you want in whatever way you want kind of floating around. Uh, the downside is, it is a bit hard to use, the documentation for it is quite awful, and I'm making this video to try and maybe help with that and make it a little bit easier to use, but even then, I just found out about this like an hour ago, so I'm not an expert on this either, uh, but I will show you what I've learned in that time. So first off, on the main page, uh, you can see here, this this is the documentation, this is, this is what you gotta work with, this is what you gotta see. Uh, and I'll try to explain that throughout the video, but if you like reading things, you can read through this and, and test things out one by one. Uh, first off though, to actually get this, hit download now. You'll be asked to donate if you want to donate, and if you like what this guy does, please do donate. I'm, I'm sure it would be a great thing to do, uh, but you don't have to. I mean, this, this guy set it up that way himself. You can hit no thanks, just take me to downloads if you don't have the money to spare. Uh, or you're not sure if you like the software yet, you try it out first and then, you know, give them some money later as a thank you. Uh, but anyway, while we're here, get whatever version you want, which is either going to be the Linux or Windows, depending on your operating system. So I obviously have Windows. Uh, once that's downloaded and you extract the zip file, we'll have inputdisplay.exe. Double click to open that up. And you'll see right away, you have an input display. If you press any of your buttons, they will work, right? D-pad, start, select, right, left, right, left. Yeah, moving my sticks around, pressing the stick down. Right, you can see I'm getting like a live feed in the bottom left and the inputs are doing things. Right, and that's, that's like your standard input display. Uh, this will only really work with standard controllers, but the thing is most controllers, even like the cheap ones and whatnot, actually use the standard kind of operating method so it should work but if it doesn't work i think the developer himself even said like you know <laughs> my controller's not working what do i do uh he just he basically said like i i can't make it work for every controller but yeah uh anyway now i'll show you how to kind of customize things but before we customize anything most importantly above all else Go to this save layout section where it says my layout, type default, hit this little arrow, which is apparently the save arrow. And are you sure? Yes. And now we have default.save. Uh, unfortunately, this program has no way to revert to default settings, which is rather annoying. <laughs> so you, you make this default save so that if you mess something up, you can always come back to this kind of stock look. Um, but yeah. Now I'll actually show you how to configure things. So first off, uh, move stuff around, which I'm sure is the main thing most people want to do. Where it says edit layout, you want to turn that to true. Uh, when you hover with your mouse somewhere and then press the button on your controller, that's when it gets over and moves. So you can see I'm moving the mouse around while holding the button down, but I let go of the button and it drops right there. Right, and that goes for any of the buttons, that goes for the D-pad. Uh, that does not work for the sticks, but for the sticks, you have to push down the stick and like so that it clicks, right? It's kind of like, I think it's called like R3 in most games. When you push down the stick, that's when it moves. Uh, and then right, start, select, you know, left, right, back, left, back, right. And now you can see I have my own, very own uh, custom overlay. Uh, and in the bottom left, you can see things are, are saying when they're being pressed and all that. Uh, and that's how you just move stuff if you want to resize stuff, which can be very useful. When you have the button pressed, you just left click to rotate it uh, and then right click to make it bigger or smaller. That's that's how you resize and rotate stuff. Pretty straightforward. Uh, not the best way of doing things, but it, I mean, at least there's something you can do. Uh, that's, you can see now it's, it's like a permanent tilt. I don't know if I can fix that. Be honest with you. There we go. Nice. I managed to fix it. But yeah, so left click to rotate, right click to uh, make big or small. 
I believe there was another thing somewhere in here. You could see left click, right click, press the button to have it go there. Oh yeah, here's the other thing. You want to move this thing in the bottom left where it says what you're pressing, press S and now you can see it's moving around, All right? Pretty straightforward. Uh, for getting different, you know, button inputs. So for example, I'm pressing A right now and it's saying circle is pressed. First off, make sure you have editing turned off. Uh, general rule of thumb for this program, have edit layout off unless you explicitly want to edit things because if I have edit layout on, I go over here and I press A, uh, it actually will just, it'll move. It'll move. It, I'm off. I'm off the tab. I'm off the window. It will just move. And if you have a certain layout that you like, that's really annoying to have it set to false <laughs> whenever you're not like moving stuff around. Anyway, uh, you can see whenever I press A, it says circle pressed, right? And this, and this here is circle. Uh, also, there's a circle there instead of an A button. And to fix that, you just go where it says controller and you have a few different options here. Of, of things you can choose, right? There's a lot of decent, solid options around. Uh, I think these are some of the better ones, but for some reason they're like stupidly large to begin with. But I think that means that they're, they're higher resolution, right? So I'm pressing A, uh, I'm, I'm not in edit mode, so I can't make it bigger or smaller, but this is, this is kind of the stuff you have to deal with with this program, unfortunately. You can see I make it smaller. This is a PlayStation one. Xbox, you can see that it's it's the inverse, the B button, and I will show you how to fix that in a second. Do you see, like this is this is probably the nicest looking of the bunch. So it's a very nice, high quality. But for now, just for simplicity, I'll go with the low quality, simple Xbox controls, which is which generally what people want. Stuff like this. Now I have to make these bigger again. But yeah, you can see when I'm pressing A, it still says circle press, and also it is pressing B. Uh, and obviously you don't want that, so this is how you fix it. So first off, look for where circle is. Circle is right here. Then press B. See what B is? B is cross. Right here, you can see cross is here. Circle is here. So press the cross one. Now press A. Right? Now press the circle one and press B. And there you go, right? Now when I press A, it's A. Now when I press B, it's B. Uh, I haven't reconfigured the, the input there, but I'm also gonna show you how to rename it because it still says cross and circle. Instead of that, you just, where it says cross, type A. Where it says circle, type B. And now you can see A pressed, B pressed, right? Pretty straightforward, very easy to fix. Uh, also, probably something you should do just so that you don't have to like do mental gymnastics try to figure out yeah, what button is what uh the problem is and and the neat part is where, where it always will be cross circle square triangle regardless of what controller you plugged in you know switch xbox whatever uh, and that's neat because up here we have a little thing called color target and this is how you change the color of things uh so for example right now i have cross selected and i'm, I'm gonna press you know that cross button cross is a uh, and when, with cross selected, I prefer not using HSV. I use I use the other version of just RGB. And you can just change the color. You can see, you can make it like more green. I can make it like this. You know, uh, you can just you can change it however you want to change it. Uh, just like that. Now my A button is more red. If I want it to be more transparent, I can change this value here. Make it more transparent. You can also use like the little hashtag color values if you have a specific one to use there. Uh, HSV lets you mess with it in different ways, which I don't really fully understand either. Uh, but you can see now it's back to normal. I managed to get it back to normal. But if you don't get it back to normal and you don't remember what you changed, this is why we made that default profile from before. We could always back it up by hitting the button on the load layout to bring us back to the start. Uh, but that's how you change the colors of things uh, to disable or enable the stuff on the bottom left here. It is stream IR. You just hit like one of the arrows, right? So show press only will only show when you press things and what is being pressed and it won't do anything fancy. Uh, hide hides it. And then show press release is what we had earlier, which I find really annoying. I think if you want this at all, just want show press only. Uh, most people just want to hide it. 
because you don't really need to see it. I'm going to keep it on just for now so you can see what I'm pressing just in case. Uh, and then next up, I'm going to go show you how to uh, have this on your OBS, how to actually add it to OBS. So we're going to have our sources, which I pulled over from my OBS. Hit the plus button, window capture, you know, name it something like, I don't know, input display. All right, and from there, select input display.exe, capture method, Windows 10, capture cursor off, uh, same executable, hit OK. And now you guys actually couldn't see like half of that because it was it was there, but with it disabled, now I have it there. Right now, now the program can full screen. Uh, next up, what we're gonna do is go back to input display over here, click on it, and where it says transparent BG, turn that to true. Now where it says color target, we're gonna go until it gets to background. Right? Get there eventually, background. And where it says A or alpha, we drag that from 255 to zero. And now you can see there's no background. So if I re-enable this, we now have the program transparently on my OBS and you kind of see me dragging it around on the recording. And this is already 90% of what you would have to do for an overlay. Uh, I'm going to go quickly disable it and show the last step, which would be right clicking input display. First off, you can hit X here and close the settings technically, but I just wouldn't recommend that. Instead, right click input display, filters, where it's when you're in filters, hit plus, uh, then crop pad, hit OK, and just crop the right by like. Whatever value you need, in my case, like 600 seems to have done the trick. Now, if I re-enable it, you can see it's just the buttons. I can move them around my screen all I want. Uh, something to notice and something to take notice of is that if you minimize uh, this program, right, the input display program, it will just disappear. You can see it's not even there. I didn't like stop recording in OBS. It just disappears. It's just a limitation of the program, apparently. What you can do to get around this is literally just click off the window and click onto like your browser, for example. And now you can see I still have my overlay, even though the program isn't on my screen. Uh, and that's because it's still open. It's just not minimized. And then that's kind of what you have to do. Uh, but yeah, I think that's about it when it comes to configuring this stuff. I mean, that's how to change color, resize, turn things. Uh, I don't actually know yet you know, how to use custom fonts and stuff. Clearly, it has support for it. And if you read the documentation, which I said, you know, be linked in the description, I'm sure it explains it there to some degree. Uh, it's it's pretty hard to read through that stuff, to be honest. I, I wish there was a, a nicer way of seeing all that. If you're confused where your save data is and, and how to save layouts, you know, do it like before instead of default. All this like, I don't know, layout one. Hit save. Are you sure? Yes. And now we have our layout. Uh, to load a layout, just hit this button. Are you sure? Yes. Now we're back to default. Go to layout one. Sure. Yes. Now we're back to layout one. All right. Pretty straightforward. Uh, how to swap between them and kind of somewhat configure all that. And, and configuring, by the way, you can configure every single one of these buttons here. Uh, then the last thing of note is open save file location. And as you can see here, uh, it opens up a folder with your dot save files, which are those save files so that you can either import things or share things with other people. Very useful for that purpose. Uh, if you have like friends or someone, or maybe like an audience of your own that you want to share this type of stuff with, but, uh, yeah. That's how to get a custom input display. I'm sure there's a bit more that you can do with this, but this is kind of the basics. And hopefully I explained it in a way that made sense to everyone. With that being said, hope you all enjoyed and found this useful. And I'll see you in the next one. Have a great rest of your day.